Doing well, but I think we need to get started. So uh, my name is Shea Bergeron. I'm from Pfizer, and I'm also the scientific coordinator of, of Etrix, which I'll talk quickly about as sort of positioning for the next two talks, one by, by Gino Marchetti, uh, who's, who's a member of Etrix at the CNRS in, in, in uh, Lyon, and um, one by, is it Eric? Yeah. Aaron, um, from Erasmus uh, in Biomed Bridges. Right, so each of stands for the European Translational Information and Knowledge Management Services. It's an IMI program that started about three years ago. It's a 23 uh, million euro investment, uh, half of which comes from pharma and half of which comes from the European Union. And basically, I'll start off with the shameless plug. And the shameless plug is we're having a community meeting that's associated with this conference tomorrow at the World Trade Center. And it's basically open to anyone who's interested. And I'm guessing that there's still spaces available if you if you have the time. Uh, we're going to go through and introduce something called the Etrix Lab, which will um, which I'll talk a little bit more about in detail. And basically, the goals of the collaboration were fundamentally client engagement, uh, enabling large public-private partnerships, a technology development, and develop, basically the development of a technology platform that can be used for public-private partnerships as well as establishing certain best practices that can be made, socialized, and become part of the culture of, of um, uh, the European translational research community. And I'll go through some accomplishments and some of the, the problems that we're facing. So I'll start off with the Who We Are slide. And there's, there's a, quite a number of people. Uh, look at Gino here. Charlotte, Charlotte is here um, uh, and worked on Etrix when she was at, at Sanofi. Uh, Basically, there's probably 50 to 75 people who are involved in the collaboration at any one time, and they come in and out. Uh, the, most of the employees, if you will, of the collaboration are part of uh, one of three of our academic centers. And basically, it's led by an executive committee uh, representing six of our partners, uh, three of which are associated with, the ac with academic centers, three of which are associated with uh, uh, the uh, three of the collaborating pharmas. I serve as a scientific coordinator, uh, and Scott Wager serves as from uh, who founded a company called Biosci Consulting Services, the program management management office. So basically, I took this out of our full project proposal. If you look at it, it basically our mission is is sort of pretty typical. These are the types of things that you're right when you want a 23 million dollars worth of worth of investment, cloud-based biomarker discovery infrastructure, collaborative research management system. What was really interesting is I put this together for a midterm review back in May, and I noticed that the support for large-scale IMI projects really should be first on the list is actually sitting kind of embedded in, you know, in the text somewhere. Um, the bottom line is we want to set up these best practices, but we had some constraints and priorities that I think were really good ones that were imposed by the IMI when we started off the, the collaboration. One was that we needed to use Transmart. And that was, it was important that we were not going to rebuild a translational research information platform as part of the project. And we had to be supporting client projects as early on in the processes as possible. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And these are really important constraints that were placed on us by the IMI as, as a contingencies with, with respect to the, the, grant, uh, uh, the grant agreements. And basically, this is the goals in, a, in that we've had in our, in our full project proposal, the idea is that we would have a, a study-centric component of the platform, which is Transmart. We'd have an analytics component of the platform, and not surprisingly, a knowledge, knowledge management component of the platform, two of which are pretty straightforward to understand um, what the goals were. The knowledge management one is actually something we've been struggling with to determine what, what that means. And in terms of what we've, we've done to date, we've by and large, and, and with, with a bit of help from New, Michigan, from New Michigan, but the first year of Etrix really was focused on building a fully open source stack. And that meant the incorporation or the option of using PostgreSQL with, with Transmart. And that was something that was predominantly done by Etrix, delivered as part of a 1.1 from the foundation. And honestly, something we're pretty proud of. And I'm Loving seeing that it's been used by by a number of by a number of projects. But that was that was basically the first step uh, for Etrix. Since then, we, in addition to providing training, 
Uh, we also provide initial standards for any of the clients that we work with. We uh, provide a public platform that Gina will talk about uh, with a number of public studies. And we also uh, created a code of use for really for secondary use of medical data that's actually been adopted by the IMI. So in addition to the platform elements of what we uh, of what we provide to the clients and to the community, we also are building up a set of best practices that we, in the end, we're going to have to sustain once once Etrix is complete. So this is the organization. There are 17 partners, 10 of which are pharma, four of which are academic centers. And then we have CDISC, uh, IDBS, and Biosec Consulting working with us. And there on the left-hand side are some of the projects that we're currently working with at some level. The way we try to, actually, no, it's about a little bit. But so the bottom line is it's, it's a large-scale collaboration. There are a number of partners. Uh, and we divide up the work in, in IMI speak, these are in work packages. So there's an ethics work package, there's a development work package, uh, there's a project management work package, and they all come together to drive the, the vision forward. And what's interesting for this for this meeting is back at the Etrix annual meeting, which was in February, we have a strategic advisory board that we bring in, and there's some some very well known names in the field. And I had I, I was responsible for leading the, the meeting. And what I expected was to talk about some of the strategies that we have moving forward for the last half of the collaboration. What I got was a lot of interest about how eTrix works with the Transmart Foundation and how they're how they're potentially different. And it actually required me to write about a five-page report after it, you know, trying to trying to delineate, you know, how our two organizations work together. I think by and large there are probably some redundancies that that you might see if you look across. Uh, what eTrix does and what Transmart, does, Transmart Foundation do. I think fundamentally to remember is eTrix is a time-bound program, and we're three years into it. It will end at five years, and you know where the foundation is here for as long as Transmart is a valuable asset to the community. And additionally, our our, our focus is really on supporting client programs, you know, you know fundamental client programs and, and whatever whatever best practices we apply. But the foundation is, is really about you know, focusing on people who are using Transmart and enabling to use Transmart in the, in the best way that they can. So some of the things that we've accomplished. So I look at it as the opening, the middle game, and the end game. And the opening game, which is the first year, which honestly ended at the release of basically the eTrix 1.1 with, with Postgres integrated, that was essentially getting us on the, on the playing board. And during that time, we, we supported three large-scale projects. We started support for three three projects, Oncotrack, Biopred, and ABI Risk, all of which are MI projects. And we have a very close uh, interaction with these particular projects where we provide, uh, in some cases, hosting services, uh, technical services, curation services, as well as the other types of best practices. So it's a very, it's a very full-on engagement. In most of the other projects that we engage, we have more lightweight engagements where we provide certain aspects, sometimes if it's just training. But what our our end goal is to support 40 projects by the end of the pro by the end of uh, the collaboration. So the middle game started, um, I said, after that first year, and basically includes a number of, number of interesting things, as, such as the incorporation uh, integration with Galaxy, with XNAT, the imaging management component that actually Aaron will will give a talk on, uh, as well as a global training model. Comprehensive, uh, comprehensive delivery for, for ABI risk, where uh, the data was loaded into hosted environments, uh, each host hosted environments. Our standard starter pack, which I mentioned, uh, the secondary use of medical data uh, document that I mentioned, and, and essentially guidelines that I mentioned. And ultimately, starting off from what was going to be the longer term strategy, which includes uh, elements for harmonizing data that I'll, I'll speak a little bit about. And from a strategic perspective, where we're going over the next two years, we're still in the middle game, which, which means we're still formulating the last bits of strategy that we'll execute over the next two years. In February, at our next annual meeting, I consider we'll be in the end game, which is the last year and a half, where we're, kind of, we're going to try to wring out all of the value that we can from the collaboration, where the strategic elements are essentially going to be set. And 
job number one is to meet the support for 40, 40 projects. And as part of that, in addition to the operational things that we do, and, and predominantly managed by the, the University of Luxembourg, where it does, who has the essentially the, the focal point of our curation efforts, we're also looking into uh, various elements of strategy. And I will say this, as of April 2015, at a midterm review, we, we were supporting 13 projects. As of last week, I find that we're supporting about 17 or 18. And at this conference, every time, and this is why I asked what, what are you using Postgres version? Everyone who's using a Postgres version of Transmart, I consider supported by Etrix because we spent an enormous amount of resource time in, in enabling that, you know, that, that fully open source stack. So basically, here are some strategic elements. So, and Anthony Rowe, who's representing uh, j and in the collaboration, we, we've been struggling over the past year and a half to try to separate out what are operational goals for the collaboration, what we originally called research goals for the collaboration, these elements of transformation that we can bring to the, to the informatics community from Etrix. And what we decided to do over the summer is recast this as Etrix Labs. And what Etrix Labs is going to be, and it's going to be launched tomorrow at our community meeting, is essentially a site, almost like an app, app store site for the various offerings that, that we have in Etrix. As part of that, there are four core elements of the strategy that we're going to execute over the next, next two years. Uh, one is SmartR, which you heard about from Sasha uh, earlier in the week. And honestly, and, and there's the, the project plan for it, or the project plan for it here. And that's an element that I think is, is immediately applicable, certainly to what we're doing with Pfizer, and, and hopefully to anyone who's using Transmart um, in terms of enriching the, uh, the, the potential for visual analytics within the application. We also have the Etrix harmonization environment, which actually looks a lot like a lightweight tool set, uh, you know, that, that IO informatics sort of a lightweight IO informatics. Where we're going to try to standardize, um, try to automate as much as possible the application of standards as data is coming in and being curated into the system. The Etrix analytics environment, which I'll talk a little bit about, which is essentially driving higher performance analytics uh, that's associated with Transmart. And um, something I'm not going to talk about too much, but, but fundamentally a way of, uh, which is part of our knowledge management strategy, uh, what I call disease, disease and target knowledge enrichment. And basically, it focuses on methods for, uh, for representing molecular pathways and using data from molecular pathways. And one of the things that's been built to date is support within the O4J, the uh, graph database. So the, briefly, the Etrix Harmonization Service, as you just explained, is something that is actually a, a core strategic element of that we're undertaking uh, um, Ibrahim Mom at the at Imperial College has been built a prototype over the past year, year and a half, of a system that would allow people to set up, visually set up their studies, and then incorporate data and apply ontologies that have been represented within within the structure. And although it's, it's developed currently in a relational database, it does have the semantic concept of, of a triple. And this is some, again, a, sort of a lightweight IO informatics that we're intending to position to help all the projects that come to us and say, well, it seems really hard to put data into Transmart and help us facilitate that process. And that's something that's, that uh, is highly resourced. We have about five or six FTEs within, within, the, um, uh, within the collaboration that's working on this, inclusive of a metadata repository that's being developed. Uh, the software that's being used, the, the visual interface that's being developed, as well as algorithms to try to predict what types of standards can be applied. Uh, it's currently in, a, in an early form supporting BioVaxSafe, which is another IMI program. And I think this is probably the, the risky bet that, that Etrix is taking, because I think this is really, really hard to do and hard to implement. And we're monitoring their, their milestones very carefully to ensure they're, they're on the right track. But something that we're trying to do, trying to take some steps and, and be a bit transformative. The Etrix analytical environment, which is led by Axel Mission, also at Imperial College, is really a combination of uh, a reference architecture, uh, a clustered architecture, 
with uh, an analytics environment and a Spark. It's, it's been talked about before by by Kays and the Hot uh, that it's a it's a Spark implementation on top of a reference architecture implemented at Imperial College. And what we're trying to understand, one, to, to drive uh, elements of high performance computing. And, and at this point, by the end of the year, there'll be four high performance pipelines built into the system. And what we're trying to understand now is how we can deploy that potentially at scale. Does it remain a resource that's available to Etrix clients uh, see it at Imperial? And we also have some, I'll talk a little bit about some of the issues that we've that we've got. And the most important issue that we didn't yeah, you know, as obvious as that probably should have been to all of us when we started out the program, we've had an enormous challenge in terms of trying to understand how how to efficiently and effectively transfer data, not from a technical perspective, but from a legal perspective and a data use and sharing perspective. Basically, the intent is to have materials transfer agreements um, for between each and the clients that we support. The clients are predominantly public-private partnerships with many, with a, with a great many partners involved. And what has to happen is that each of those MTAs, once they're crafted, have to be essentially signed off by every single partner in Etrix and every single partner in, in, the, cla in, in the client collaboration. It takes, we, we've been working on two of these for about 18 months. And Chris Marshall, who's probably in the science science section, has been has been really trying to drive this. We finally went to our midterm review committee and said, you know, I don't think we can actually do this, right? It's just too complicated with large scale public private partnerships because no one can sign off on behalf of the partners. We're in 18, we're into this 18 months, and we're making some progress, but it's incredibly slow. Could we just use data processing agreements, EU data processing agreements, would that suffice? And when we got back, and Paul was one of the people on board, basically said, no, you're not going to do this, because we need to figure out how to make data sharing work and work in the EU environment. And that's something that we're, we're funding you to do. So we're, we're continuing to, to try to build an MTA template that can be used effectively with as little negotiation as possible to enable partnership between whether it's Etrix or whether it's any data management entity interacting with with a large scale public private partnership, and this is this is the biggest challenge that we we face to date, and a really hard one to hard one to resolve. All right, in the end, we have to sustain the best practices. We will be this will be over in, in two years, and. We've, we've done a couple things to try to position ourselves. One is the development of the Etrix network, which is essentially putting together a loose partnership of, well, ultimately it will be commercially, commercial entities or fee-for-service entities that will provide the best practices that can be uh, essentially purchased as services or as, or as potentially software from uh, key groups that know how to, that have been indoctrinated in, in the provision of, of these services. ITTM is an example, which is a spinoff from the University of Luxembourg, which uh, Reinhard Schneider, who is part of Etrix, and spun, spun off a company from Metrix to do these to to be able to provide these types of best practices and building up that network so that we can move forward once Etrix is is complete. Uh, there's the idea of data maintenance, and we're looking into uh, potential collaborations with Elixir and other, other entities to be able to uh, host the data in the long term and maybe have an EU hosting environment, whether it's, whether it's the, the programs that Etrix supports or just across the EU. And also something that we hadn't expected, but because of all the issues that we're having with data sharing, with, with the ethical work, with the ethical security work that we've done, we're actually positioned to maybe work with patients to try to understand and promote data sharing directly within the patient community. And we're trying to figure out how that might that might work over the next next couple of years and get some traction, not only in, in developing things like template MTAs, but actually making some some impact in terms of the social cultural aspects of of patients and and their and being encouraging and and then being able to consent to share their data. All right, 
So I'll end with one of the same slides. So in our full project proposal, we've actually made substantial progress against the items that are in our description of work. And actually, I'm, I'm really proud to be a part of part of this. I don't do any of the real work, honestly, but I, I'm proud to be a part of it. So I think there's been an enormous amount of delivery. Uh, our, our midterm reviewers were really, you know, were really critical on the number of projects we had supported to date. But it's not it's not like you support projects, um, you know, in a linear fashion across across the program or across the timeline of the program. What I what I hope and I trust that we've done is built enough best practices that now over the next two years we can really start um, uh, building our client base, building the impact, uh, building on the impact. As I said, if we include all the people who are using PostgreSQL. With their Transmart instances, we're up to well over 20 that we can put on our list, and we're so we're probably over halfway there. And and again, Etrix is approaching its end game. And I will say this, and you know, I've been honestly, I've been a little bit a little bit frustrated in the sense, you know, for this meeting in terms of having some of the discussions that I think we need to have for for sustaining the Transmart community. Etrix has been been a big player in the Transmart community as is, as is trade, and these projects are well. Etrix is approaching its end game. See, you know, trade is is in its end game, and we need to understand when these big collaborations that are supporting Transmart and what we're going to do as a community without without them overtly, without us these projects overtly funded and contributing. I think that's an important transition that the foundation will have to guide us all through. But, but I think an important one. When I look out and see almost all the posters, or at least 50%, maybe 70% of the posters being CTM trait or Etrix, um, I think it'd be nice to have a goal of shifting, shifting that for next year, and maybe make them 15 or 20%, and and really encourage the rest of the community to to start, you know, to to really contribute, really promote, and really present the things that they're doing with Transmart. And again, the shameless plug for tomorrow. Thank you very much. There's not, not that we're aware of, it's not in the EU community, and partly it's because of partly it's because of shifting well of different laws in the different member states that, that leads to some issues and just in general. So from the states, you know, being from the states it's even more of a shock because we're used to the impediments to data sharing are fundamentally associated with with the insurance, you know, how you know, how the insurance company might deal with data that they might might come across. In Europe, it's very much, I think, first and foremost, um, uh, you know, personal right to to security of data, and then maybe less, not completely, but less so that um, of insurance. And and honestly, we had not thought that this was going to be an issue. We had not thought that this was something that we were going to need to tackle. And we kind of found ourselves on the forefront of trying to do that. So there is no template that we're aware of. There is no. You know, other than and part of it is is the large scale public private partnership. So if you're doing this at a smaller scale, you can even come with a negotiated agreement. But when you're dealing with something like Aviros, which has got 40 partners in them, 40 partners as part of ABI Risk, and 17 partners within within uh, Etrix, you know that's almost 60 entities that have to coordinate and actually sign off on a contract, all of which are are across the EU, across academic, commercial, and all have their own needs in terms of their own legal departments that have their own their own perspectives of what data security and, and ethics and within the tran within a transfer process is going to be. And maybe we just never hit it because you know we've never done things at this scale. I don't know. I'm not sure it would change anything else because I think so. If so, if you had it, because basically all these are consented, right? So most of, almost everything that we 
we support is a large scale clinical study, right? So you have all, so you've got the protocol, you've got the protocol consents. They may vary, and that's actually one of the issues that sometimes the, if you're not careful, the, the consenting language might vary country to country, and that has an impact on you. Um, I'm not sure it would make a difference if it was a personal, because I think the laws are on a per state, and still back to laws based on the data processor and, the, and essentially the data generator. And, and maybe it has, but I'm not sure it would. I, I, I don't know actually how that would be done. I don't I don't know, maybe someone else has insight. So everything that we do in interest is is directly against a public private a public private partnership that basically is running something that looks like a clinical trial with a protocol. Are there things that challenge this area that seems to be in some 